Hello friend, welcome back. In this session, I want to discuss about how can create that multi-authentication system. That means we will create one of the e-commerce project and for that e-commerce project, we will need the two admin panel. One will be as an admin where admin can manage all that your storage like uploading product, manage that order, manage that report. Everything will be managed by the admin right so for the admin we will need one of the authentication system and also we will need another one for the user where user able to logging and after the logging he will be able to purchase this order complete this order user can change their password change their profile picture return all that options and much more things will be for the user right so that will be two different authentication system and for this project i will use laravel authentication package as a jdstream okay so then that will be very much interactive so with this jdstream how can create that multi-authentication system in this session step by step i will show you with a live example I hope you will like it very much so thanks for watching so we'll start that journey by installing laravel 8 in this video, I want to discuss about how can you install Laravel in your system. And also we'll create one of the project. So for doing this, we have to do we have to go to that Laravel official website and there is a documentation. And into the documentation, if you go to the getting started and there is an installation. Okay. So right now Laravel's latest version is running as a Laravel 8. And we'll build our total complete project with this latest version as a Laravel 8. And into the installation area, here you can see there's a getting started with the Mac, getting started the Windows and the Linux. So this all that functionalities is for Laravel sale. So Laravel recently introduced one of the new package as a Laravel sale. So with this sale, if you want to install it, then you can install it. Rather than that, the another option as installation via the composer. So right now for this project, I want to install Laravel via the composer. So if you click on here and you can see that the installation via the composer. And here for this project, I am using localhost XAMPP. I think you already know about it. Uh, the XAMPP is the local server. So right now for this project, I will use this XAMPP. And now I am using that XAMPP 3.2.4. So that is one of the totally complete free software you have to do, I have to download it, that will be one of the exe file and simply next by next process and then you will be able to install it. Okay, so after that install you will get this type of one of the pop-up box and here there is the Apache and the MySQL. So for this project I will also use that MySQL. So make that sure you run two of these, you have to run that Apache. I just simply started it and also you have to run that MySQL. So I simply started both of these. So now I want to do, I want to create one of the folder for our project. So when you install that XAMPP, then in your C drive, it is, I have installed it into the C drive, you will get that XAMPP, this type of one of the folder, rather than I have created um, this folder as a local host. Okay, so whatever the name actually you choose. So uh, right now I install that XAMPP in our this C drive and I just install it into the local host. And into the local host area, that is also as a ST docs. And stdocs is the main root directory of your local host. So whatever the things you will create, you can actually access it from here. So now I want to do for our DC commerce project. First of all, I want to do I want to create one of the folder and I just name it as a pro. Okay, I name it as a pro. That means a project three. So this type of one of the folder I want to create. And here I want to create one of the project by the Laravel 8. So make that sure you install that XAM and make that sure you run your Apache and the MySQL. Okay, friend. So here it's perfect. And also make that sure before you install it, make that sure you install that Node.js. So there is a Node.js official website. It's pretty much simple one of the software. Here there is a current version and there is our L LTS version. So you can download it. So if you click on here, it will be downloaded one of the exe file. And that is simple, very simple software. So you have to install it. Okay. So when you install it, then if you want to check it that Node.js is successfully installed it or not, you can check it if you go to your command line with the common prompt here if you write with the npm npm and then version i want to check that versions which version i'm actually using so now you can see right now um that node.js i have already installed it successfully and now i'm using that node.js version as a 6.13.6 .6, which is perfect for me okay so you can check that npm version with this so when you install it then that will be actually visible make that sure you install that node.js okay so that also needed so now the question is that what is the node.js 
Node.js is an open source cross-platform JavaScript runtime environment and library for running web application outside the client's browser. So when you install that Node.js, you can able to access Node.js all that library. So step by step, I will show you. So right now I want to do and create one of the project via the composer. So if you go to that official website, the Laravel, that is the installation via the composer. So if you, you want to install that come with the composer, that is a composer, um, get composer.org. So first of all, we have to do, we have to install it. And also the composer is one of the dependency manager of the PHP. So that means if you install that composer, you, you'll be able to run some of the command line so in fundamental i have already discussed about that things with you so right now there is a latest version is uh, for the composer as a 2.0.9 which is very fast so i will recommend it to you if you are using that uh, composer one point something then you should update your composer okay so right now show you like first of all there is a download option into the download option there is a command line okay so right now i copy it I simply copy this total common line and now I have already created one of the folder as a project 3. So now here I open the CMD and now I simply run it. Okay. So now it should be created two of this file. So there is a composer setup file and the composer, um, there is our composer file. So and also there is an option for the unlink composer setup.php. That means here I want to do, I want to unlink this file. That means that will be gone. Click as enter and now you can see it's now totally gone. So friend composer is now successfully installed. So right now if you want to check it which which composer version you are using you can also check it so that will be as a composer. You can uh, all directly access with the composer uh, rather than that is a hyphen and the V and if that means the composer version if you click as enter. So now it will be provided all that your command line which command you will be able to use with this composer and also you can see friend now I am using the composer version 2.0.9 that means I am using that latest version. So as I told you composer 2 is very much fast I really like it so much so make that sure you updated your composer so if you're using that 1.0.9 there is some of the common line I want to share with you. Like you can see there is a with the composer V you can actually check that version. That means there is actually the version. And right now when you actually using that composer 1.0.9 or something like that. Then if you want to update it you can update it with this command as a composer self update. Okay, so when you run it automatically, it will be updated. And if you want to run it specific with the two, then you have to do you have to run this one. That means the composer self update double hyphen two. That means automatically it will be updated your one version to the two version. Okay, so that is actually the another common line. So if you want to uh, update your composer, you can update directly with this um, command. And also there is another one as a composer self update rollback. Rollback means it should be actually going back. That means right now I'm using composer version 2.0.1. So if you want to go back to the previous version as a one point something, then you have to do you have to run this command, then automatically it will be rolled back to your previous version. Okay, friend, I hope this uh, all that command will help you a lot. So right now it's perfect. So I have already installed that composer and now I'm using that composer version 2.0.9. Okay, friend, so now I want to do and to create one of the project via the composer. So now go to our um, official website. And here you can see there is a composer create of project Laravel. So now I simply copy it. And then here, so that is actually our project directory. So I have created one of the project directory as a pro three, right? So that is actually our project directory. So now I simply paste it. Okay, so here, um, I copy it. I copy this one. And then here I paste it. So friend, that is actually the composer create project live Laravel Laravel. And that is the exam example app. So that will be your project name. So right now I want to do, I will create one of the e-commerce projects. So better I want to name it as e-commerce. Okay, I want to create one of the, our project name will be as e-commerce. Okay, so this type of one of the project uh, folder I want to create. And now if you click as the enter, so now it will be downloaded all that file very fastly <laughs> from to the internet. Okay, so you can see it's now perfectly downloading and also it's created one of the folder name that means our project name as e-commerce. Right friend? So friend, uh, make that sure you are connected with the internet and also it should be take some of the time. So better when it should be done, then I will come back again. 
Here you can see friend our project is now successfully done. That means it's now successfully created our project. So that is our project, right? So that is our project and here you can see it's downloaded all that our file. Perfect. So now if you want to use it uh, now, there is another instruction. You can see there is a CD. CD means that as you look actually the change directory of our project. Okay. That means if, you know, if, if you want to change that directory, you can change it like here right now I have I want to do and to change that directory set so that is our pro 3 that is a pro 3 folder and to the pro 3 folder I want to change that directory pro 3 to the e-commerce folder so now right now if you want to do that work that is actually the CD that means the change directory and our uh, project name our project folder name as e-commerce okay now click the enter now you can see it's now automatically change that directory as a pro 3 and the e-commerce and then that is our project Either then you can also um, directly go to particular this area and here if you open uh, with the cmd now you can see it's now re redacted to our this uh, specific folder okay so right now it's okay with me and after that i want to do i want to run our php artisan surf command so here if you want to run it then it should be actually providing you one of the server access link so now i want to do i want to use that php artisan and then serve okay so right now i simply run this now click the enter now you can see friend that is actually our development server so right now if you copy it and now i want to do and to run it i paste it click the enter yes you can see friend our laravel project is now successfully installed so right now our laravel version as a 8.0 26.1 and i'm using php version as a 7.4 okay so in fundamental i have already discussed about that things with you here i have already run that uh, mysql so if when you run it when you install that xamp if you run with the local host click as the enter and here you can see there's a welcome xamp for windows that is actually our version if you go to that php my admin that will be our sql version if you go to that php info and in the php info here you can see right now i am actually using php version 7.4.11 right so make that sure you updated your php version minimum 7.3 to the 8 whatever you actually choose okay so right now it's okay with me i'm using 7.4.11 and also there is a php my admin so if you go to that php my admin that is actually our total database so here we will create our database okay so database deleted everything i will create on particular data area as i told you for this project i will use that mysql so which is perfect for me so here we successfully created our project i hope it's very much clear to you so now i want to do here we don't need this and also here we don't need this so that is our project and i want to do um that is a cloud project right so for this course i want to use that sublink text editor you can use that visual code editor you can use that atom whatever actually you choose right now for this uh, project i want to do and to use this sublink editor okay so that is one of the editor and that is totally free you can download it from to the google so there is a sublink text editor one of the official site from here you can actually download it and then simple install it okay so right now first of all i want to do and to um take our total project in our this uh, sublink text editor so it's drag and drop so i just simply uh, paste it on here and you can see all that project now you can actually able to access it from here okay friends so right now we successfully um, created our project and i have created our project name as e-commerce project and we install that laravel in our system perfectly so friend in our next video i want to discuss about how can install laravel authentication okay so for the authentication i will use that laravel JD stream so how can install laravel default authentication system in your project in our next video i will show you that things with a live example in our previous video here we successfully install laravel right so here we successfully created one of the project as e-commerce so right now I want to do I want to install Laravel default authentication system. If you go to that Laravel official website, so here I have already completed this total part, right? And now I want to do I want to um, create that default authentication system. And for the default authentication system, I want to use another package. So right now Laravel uh, for the authentication package, you can use that Breeze. Okay, you can also use that as a JD stream. So right now I want to do I want to um, work with the JD stream. So if you open it, so that is one of the another package. You can see that is redirected to the JD stream dot Laravel dot com. 
so for this project i want to do and to install that jd stream so here if you want to install it uh, that is the installation process if you go to that installation here that is the installation jd stream there is a composer i have already installed that composer so right now we are able to access it that means the m composer required laravel jd stream okay so if you want to install that uh, default authentication system that means everything actually ready made that means you don't need to do anything for the authentication system but literally we will customize it as per our demand so first of all i want to do i want to install that jd stream so i simply copy it i copy it and now that is our project and here i run our server with the php artisan serve so better i want to do and to create new one so that is our directory so into the directory area i want to open the cmd so that is our pro and that is our e-commerce right so that is our e-commerce better i want to make it a little bit bigger size okay so then actually it will be helpful to you so that is our project name as e-commerce so now here i want to do and to paste it as a composer required laravel jd stream now if you click as a enter so now it will be uh, downloaded all that file from to the internet and it will be created some of the file in your project directory so into the project directory in fundamental i have already discussed about that things with you into the route area into the web route here it will be created one of the new route and also into the api that means the app here it will be created one of the new file okay so and also into the um, database into the migrations area you can see it's now created some of the um, table so also it should be created some of the table so here it may take little time you can see composer <laughs> Uh, two is very much fast as i told you friend how much fast it's already completed that total process okay here you can see it's now successfully run it and after that i want to do i want to also install that laravel um, that means the jerry stream library so if you want to install it i copy it there is a php artisan jerry stream install library i copy it and also after this okay after this i paste it now click the enter so it will be also downloaded all that file from to the internet so make that sure you are connected with the internet and it may take little time so better when it will be done then i will come back again yes here you can see friend how much fast actually is install that total process so liveware is also now installed so now if you go to your project into the project now as you can see into the migration area it's now created some of the database table so here it's created some of the database table into the route area automatically it created one of the route as a middleware so with this by default one of the middleware as a auth uh, with the same term and that is a verified and when it will be verified there is a gate and the slash dashboard that means when it will be successfully logged in that will be our url I was a slash dashboard and then into the slash dashboard dashboard it's re return view one of the dashboard page so that is one of the view page okay so and also it's created some of the file into the app into the action you can see into the action area it's created one of the fortify some of the authentication file and also it's created some of the jd stream file and also into the config into the config area it's created two of this file one is the jd stream another is the fortify okay so literally i will also sh discuss about that things with you so rest of all right now i want to do and to install our laravel default authentication system so that's all so here i successfully run both of this okay i successfully install that jd stream i successfully install that liveware and after that i want to do i want to also install um the npm install npm run dev so for installing both of these make that sure you install that uh, node.js as i told you before so i have already installed that node.js in my system so right now it's perfect so right now if you want to install it you can install both of these with the same line uh, like here you can see that is also one of the common line as a npm install npm run dev so both of these i want to run it oh yeah, with that at a time i copy it and here I paste it as a npm install and npm run dev okay so now if you click as a enter so now it will be installed that npm that means it will be install all that packages for the npm that means here it will be created on the package folder okay so friend it may also take little time you can see it's now downloading so it may take little time it will be created on another folder so better when it will be done then i will come back again
yes you can see friend that our total things is not perfect so there is a laravel mix as a build successfully so you can see there is a compile successfully and that is some of the file is now added as a into the js app js and in a css as a app css okay so that means if everything okay it should be like look like that way so that is a compiled and successful okay that means this type of one of the compile successful and also in our public into the public you can see it's now created one of the js as a app js and with the css that is a app css okay automatically it will be created and also that is all that our library that is a note module all that library you can see there is all that building library is now you can actually able to access it so which is perfect so that is the simple process make that sure you install that laravel jd stream i have installed that laravel liveware and then i run that npm install and the run tape and now we have to do we have to migrate it so when you run that as a php addition migrate that means whatever the database by default is now created into the database area into the migrations that that is all the default database table right so that is all the default database table so now we have to do we have to migrate it so before migrate it we have to create one of the database i didn't create any database so better i want to continue this process in our next video we'll create one of the database and after that we'll migrate it okay so how can do that work i will show you that things with a live example in our previous video here we successfully install laravel jd stream laravel liveware and also we run that npm install and run deb right so now we have to do we have to migrate our all that our default database table so if you want to migrate it first of all we have to create one of the database right i didn't create any database and into this example uh, as i told you make that you run that as a mysql so right now it's running and apache is also running so if you go to your uh, database into the database area that is that means that is actually our local host and the php my admin so when you install that zamp automatically you'll be able to access this php my admin so from to the php my admin you have to create the database there is option for the database if you click as a database so into the databases i want to do i want to create one of the new databases so right now they have some of the database i have already created now and for our this e-commerce project i want to create one of the um, database name and i just name it as e-commerce okay i name it as e-commerce so this type of one of the database i want to create okay so now everything will be just like that same i simply click as a create so now you can see our database is now successfully created so friend before i have already installed that jd stream but right now if you uh, refresh your project it will be show you some of the error i show you so now you can see it's now showing as the unknown database laravel okay that means that is actually one of the building a database name as a laravel and also there is a section from the section where id that means something is missing so first of all we have to do we have to change our this database name so i have created one of the database name as an e-commerce right so that is actually our database name i copy it and now go to your project directory into the project directory if you go to that dot env okay into the dot env that is our app url as a local host and that is a connection as a mysql and then that is by default you can see when you install that laravel laravel actually provided by default one of the database name as a laravel so right now i want to do and to change it i make it as an e-commerce that i have created and also there is a root that means the username as a root and password as a null so if you want to check it that depends on your zamp like if you want to check it go to the pc you may have been i go to that our total side and here if you go to that user account and with the user account here you can see friend username by default for this one that means for this local host as a root and into the password they have no password that means which is totally fine with me right so into the project i have created one of the database name as e-commerce by default my username as a root and they have no password for the reasons here i make it as a empty that's all okay now if you click as a save all and after that it should be display another error i click as a refresh now here you can see friend it's now showing another error that means this error is for the e-commerce section does not exist right because of all i didn't migrate it so as i told you when you install the laravel default authentication system when you install laravel then by default some of the table is created so now here we have to do we have to migrate all that our database table right so right now our database is totally empty if you go to that database 
that is our e-commerce database you can see it's now totally empty so right now i'm going to run our this command as a php addition migrate so with this php addition migrate i want to migrate all that our database table on in our this database area so if you want to do that work it's pretty much simple that is actually our perfect so that is actually our location that is our pro and here that is our project name as e-commerce so now here i want to run as a php artisan migrate if you click as enter now automatically it should be migrate all that our database table you can see all that our database table is now created successfully that means everything is great so by the, that is all that by default table now if you click as a refresh yes you can see there is a failed job the migration the password reset the personal access token sessions and then the user okay so now if you refresh it now everything should be work yes you can see now our that is our total project and that is the logging and that is a registration so if you open that as a login yeah you can see our jd stream is installed successfully there is an email address and there is a password option if you go to that forget your password that is a forget password all that option that means all the pages and then if you go to another one as a register that means the register into the register register page so here friend you don't need to do anything everything as ready made as i told you so right now by default one of the table as user table okay so into the user table area i want to do and to create one of the new um user i show you like here right now i want to name it as a user and then i name one of the email address as a user at the gmail.com and i put the password password as a udemy12345 and you do me one two three four five so this type of one of the user registration i want to register now click as a register yes you can see friend now it's successfully created one of the user and also it's redirected to now which page is now redirected to the dashboard page that means if you now go there click as a browse you can see it's now created one of the id there is a name as a username as a user email address and there is a one of the b3 password so as i told you when you right now everything will be more clear to you so here I, our database connection is so, now successfully created if you now go to our route that means in our web route you can see when that will be as a user will be successfully logged in that will be as a slash dashboard so that is actually the slash dashboard right and after that it will be written redirect which page it will be written redirect to one of the view page as a dashboard that means if you go to our view that means that is actually our resources into the resources if you go to that view into the view area you can see that is actually the dashboard okay so that is the dashboard page and now this dashboard page is now visible so now that is actually visible okay i hope friend it's very much clear to you so here if there is a user into the user area there is a profile there is a logout system so everything is ready made here you don't need to do anything if you click as a logout you can see you can successfully log out if you want to log in again so i have already created one of the user as a email user at the red gmail.com and the password so that is a user at the red gmail.com and password as a udemy12345 click as a login yeah i am now successfully logged in okay that means our default authentication system is now successfully working right friend so in our next video i want to discuss about all that uh, portion how that file is textured actually for the jd stream better in our next video i will show you that things with a live example in our previous video here we successfully installed laravel default authentication system and here right now for the default authentication system i'm using laravel jd stream right so how can you install it i think every process is very much clear to you so right now we don't need this so that is perfect so first of all i want to do and to discuss about that file structure which is very much important one of the part as i told you here in our web route so that is our authentication that means one of the middleware default middleware as a symptom and then that is a verified when it will be as a verified then it will be return direct to the slash dashboard url and into the dashboard url it's return one of the view dashboard okay that means in our view into the view area that is actually page is now loaded so that is the page okay so this page is now visible in particular this area so if you want to remove it i show you uh, like here like right now they are using that live word so right now here i remove it okay i remove total things from to this position now if you click as a save all and now everything will be very clear to you so this part not should be visible right now click as a refresh 
yeah you can see it's now totally gone so whatever the things right now you will put in particular that area it will be visible if you open like here i name it as a uh, this is sorry this is home page okay or just home page so this type of one of the name i just put now click as a save all and now if you refresh it now you can see it's now showing as a this is just home page and that is also another one of the dashboard so this dashboard area actually comes from our same page that means this dashboard you can see that is the dashboard so here if you want to change it like i put as a high okay so if you now click as a save all so now it should be updated it now should be display as a high click as a refresh yeah you can see it's now perfectly visible as a high and that is another part as a dashboard part right so this part is actually comes from um, the another location so this location is that this navigation menu okay so into this navigation menu here you can see that is the dashboard so this dashboard is now visible so that is visible in particular that area okay so here that is actually the um, location and here there is an authenticated current username so if you want to visible that current username you can visible it so that is everything on here okay that means you can see that is auth username auth username if you want to visible that means which user is logging that is default one of the middleware so which user is logging if you want to display that username you can display it right now i copy it like here into the dashboard in our profile that we see in our view and there is a dashboard here i just simply paste it so which user is locking this user name will be visible so this name is means if you go to our user table that means in our user table that is actually your field name as a name right so that means right now i am locking with this user so this log authenticated user which user is locking this user this name that means user right so that will be visible okay so i show you like here i simply updated that authenticated username now click as a save all and now if you refresh it so after this high you can see after this high it's visible as a user i hope friend this file structure structure is very much clear to you right and also if you go to that profile into the there is a on, on two option as a profile and there is a logout so into the profile you can see there is a profile information there is a name the email address so everything is ready made friend here if you want to change that name you can change it if you want to change that email address you can change that email address so don't worry literally we will customize everything as per our demand okay and also there is another option for the update password that means the current password new password and confirmation password because this user already they have one of the current password right right now i am already logging with the user for this user they have also one of the password so if you want to change it here you have to put that current password the new password and the confirmation password and validation is also ready made you can see there is a current password field is required so everything is ready made on here there is a two factor authentication you can also use that two factor authentication the browser session all the data that means everything will be visible in particular that area if you're logging with the different browser and from here if you want to log out from all that browser session you can actually manage it from one account and also there is another important part as a delete account so if you want to delete this account you can delete it so how much interactive you can see friend everything is ready made and also there is a update password so like that portion actually um, i show you that is also another file as i told you into the config when you install that laravel default authentication system it's actually created two of this file into the config folder into the config folder that is a fortify okay and with the fortify by default they are using the guard as a web okay and then here here they have some of the features you can see there is some of the features as a registration there are some of the features as a reset password and there is a um, update password so like right now i don't want to use that update password so i want i just simply put it as a noted okay when you put it as a noted then it not should be visible click as a save all so right now this our this update password portion not should be visible click as a refresh yeah you can see it's now totally gone okay so you can actually manage it from here so right now it's okay with me i make it as a open i want to visible that update passwords as i told you literally we'll actually customize everything um don't worry about it click the refresh it again 
yeah it's now perfect visible and also there is a profile information for the profile information there is a another one like as a you name that is email address and if you want to display that profile there is also another features if you go to uh, that config into the config there is also another one as a jd stream into the jd stream area there is also another features you can see so that is the features so right now if you want to access that features for the api if you want to access that stream um, and the privacy policy and the profile photo so profile photo is also uh, ready made right now i just open remove that our comment so right now it should be visible click as a save all and now if you go there click as a refresh yes you can see friend now that is actually the photo option so now there is a select photo so from here you can select this photo so that is also one of the photo option and if you go to our database into the user uh, table that means into the user table that have by default one of the uh, field as a profile photo path okay so whatever the images will be uploaded it will be saved in particular that area so right now if you i want to show you like here i choose one of the photo i choose uh, like i choose this one okay i open it so after that if you click as a save now you can see if this photo is not saved successfully because of all if you uh, show you if you go there and i copy image address and now i paste it now you can see friend now actually that is our url as a local host is e storage and the profile photo right and that is actually by default it's now created this name so first of all here we have to do have to change this local host right because of all right now we are using our port our server port as a, this one right so now i simply copy it so first of all i want to change that local host so that is we have to do have to change it in our dot env file now go to our project directory and that is our dot env file okay into the dot if you can see that is our app url so right now i am not using that local host i am using as a this one as a http or this port and make the sure you re remove this slash okay so that is actually our app url so now i just simply save all which is perfect okay so after that what exactly we have to do right now if you click as a refresh not this one better here i refresh it again okay i refresh it again and now i copy it i copy uh, this image that means image address and paste it again so now you can see friend now that is actually our port so that means right now that is our perfect port but i didn't create this storage link so if you want to create this storage link then they have also one of the command line i want to run it as a php artisan storage link okay so here if you want to do that work uh, like that is our project here i want to do and to run one of the storage link as a php artisan and then the storage okay storage link so if you actually run it automatically it will be created on the folder into the public see in our project into the public area it will be created on the storage folder okay so i show you like here if you now click as the enter now you can see the link has been created so that is our storage one of the shortcut link is now created and here you can see there is a profile photo and that is the profile photo i have updated right friend okay so here now everything should be work like right now i want to check it again i close it now refresh it yes you can see now our e profile photo is now visible so now if you copy that uh, again that address so now paste it yes you can see that is actually our local server and then the storage i have created and there is a profile photo folder and that is our P jpg that means the images okay that means everything is great so right now if you want to remove this photo you can remove it remove it you can remove it rather than if you select another new photo and then the right now i want to use uh this one okay i open it now i want to change it let's save yeah it's now successfully updated i hope friend it's very much clear to you um how that functionality actually works so there is a profile you can manage your all that profile from here there is a logout session that is our bar so if you go to that home page that is a dashboard so that is the dashboard is now visible as a high user and also from here if you click as a logout you can simply redirect it to the logout page so that is a logging page so as i told you here we install jdstream and that is our jdstream logging page right friend and also if you want to log in with this user 
you can you um, put your appropriate user and email address and the password and now it's visible that name as a high user so that is our um, single authentication right so friend for the e-commerce project as i told you we'll need that multi-authentication system that means we have to create another authentication for the admin so for the admin we have to create another table and also we have to, i want to do and to add some of the seed data so how can do that work in our next video step by step i will show you everything with a live example in your previous video here i have discussed about laravel the default authentication system how that default single authentication system actually work but right now i want to discuss about that multi-authentication system so friend that will be very much interactive one of the things i hope you will like it very much how much easily you can create that multi-authentication system with the jerry stream so step by step everything i will show you like right now i am already logging with the user right so now if you click as a logout so into the logout that is a logging so you can see that is actually one of the by default one of the url that is actually slash logging and if you want to access that register okay and you can see that is actually one of the another one page is now loaded as a register right so now i want to do i want to create another um, authentication system for the admin so when you install laravel when you install laravel um, default authentication system where we get by default some of the table right where we might get by default some of the table as a user table so right now i want to do i want to create another table for the admin so for the admin here i want to do i also want to load the with the same page like here that will be on the logging so this will be for the user and also i want to create another one as a admin and then slash logging okay so when you click as a admin logging then our one of the another mm, logging page will be loaded and from here if you put your appropriate admin email address and the password then it will be returned redirect to our another dashboard as a admin dashboard okay friends so how can do that work i show you like right now that is our um, default one is a locking and here if you put your appropriate user that means i have already created one of the user in our user table as a name there is the email address and the password so if you put your appropriate email address and the password click as a login now you can see uh, this user is successfully locking and it's visible that name that is our user right so that's all that actually default route if you want to check that all that your route list you can also check it i show you if you want to check it uh, like here here if you run with the php artisan and then route and then list so that is one of the command as a php artisan route list if you click as a enter you can see friend all that default route okay so my monitor is not much big size so here if you if you can say everything is ready made like there is a user profile the password that is our default one of the route the confirm password route okay and that is all the trout and then the password you can see there is a register and register is actually there is one of the post method and there is also another register and this laravel 45 http controller register and this method that means that is actually one of the create method so this method is responsible for the create one of the new uh, user right so i have already created one of the user as a user and also they can see there is a um, logout so logout functionality that means when you click as a logout okay when you click as a logout then this uh, method that this destroy method is responsible for the logout and that is the file location as a laravel 45 http controller and the authentication session controller and then there is a destroy method okay friend and also for the locking is the same so as i told you here i want to do and to uh, create two things one will be for the user another will be for the admin so for the logging that is actually the one of the create method and this create method is responsible for this user logging okay so now we have to do we have to create the same things for the admin right i hope friend you all understand about it as i told you everything is by default so with the default authentication system how much easily you can create that multi-authentication system i will show you then everything will be very much clear to you okay so right now that is our um, default all that uh, file that means default all the trout list so first of all i want to do for our admin i want to create one of the controller so in fundamental i have already discussed about that things with you how can create the controller so if you want to create this controller like in our um, that is actually our http that means in our http that is a controller 
So into the controller area, I want to create one of the new controller as an admin controller. That is a by default one of the controller. Right now, I want to create new one as a PHP artisan. Better I make it a little bit big size. Okay, I name it as a PHP artisan and then make controller and I want to create one of the controller name as the admin controller. Okay, I name it as admin controller. So this type of one of the controller I want to create now click as enter. Now you can see our controller created successfully. That means right now if you go to that our HTTP that is a controller and you can see that is our admin controller. Right friend? And also I want to do, I want to create another table as I told you before but when you install that Laravel, Laravel provided by default one of the table as a user table. So this type of the same things I just simply copy it and then I will actually replace it with for the admin. Okay, so I show you like that is our default one as a user right now I want to do I want to create another um, table. So I want to create another table as a admin and also I want to create another model like if you go to um, that app in the app that is a model you can see when you install Laravel um, and Laravel authentication system by default they have one of the model as a user model so that is our user model so, so right now I want to do the same things for our admin okay I want to show you like right now I close everything I close everything from here and that is actually user model right so first of all I want to do I want to create one of the migrations table um, if you want to create it that would be as a PHP artisan and then make I name that as a model okay I create as a model I want to create that model name as a admin and also I want to create one of the migration that will be as a hyphen and then the M that means it should be created two things it will be created one of the model as a admin and also it should be created one of the admin migration stable right now click as enter now you can see friend it's now created one of the model successfully and also it's created one of the migration stable right so that is actually our model and that is our admin model and also I have created another one in our database into the database if you go to that migration here you can see that is actually our admin so that is our admin table so this admin table will be just like our user as I told you I will actually um, copy everything from to this area that means from our existing one and then we'll replace it from our for our admin so that will be just like that same for now for the user I copy everything okay I copy everything from to this position and now that is our another one as an admin so now I simply paste it okay so for the A it will be created one of the admin a table and our field will be just like that same here I don't need to change anything okay so that will be perfect and also for the admin uh, that means the model that is our user model from the user model I copy everything I copy everything and now in our model as an admin here I just simply paste it okay I just simply paste it only we have to do we have to change that class name our class name will be as an admin so I simply add that as an admin so that's all you have to do so now I want to do I want to actually migrate it that means here I want to migrate this table now if you click as a save all so in our database right now there you can see they have no um, table for the admin so now I want to up migrate that means after this I simply run as a PHP artisan migrate okay that is a PHP artisan migrate now click as enter now you can see our migration table is now successfully created so now if you go there click as this refresh yes you can see there is another table is added as if admins and into the admin area I have added actually the same as the same all that field and you can see now that is our admin field as a name email email verification password that's just like our user I hope friend it is very much clear to you so now I want to do I want to insert some of the data okay that means here I want to insert some of the data you can insert this data manually from to the import rather than you can also see it like if you go to that Laravel official website and into the official website if you go to the documentation and to the documentation if you go to the database and with the database you can see that is actually the seeding so that is actually the seeding if you want to create there is a php artisan make seeder and the user seeder okay and if you want to find out that file that this file is in our um, that, that is actually middleware 
so that is a provider with now we don't need this into the database you can see into the database area there is a factory so also by default one of the factories as a user factories and that is all that our seeders okay so before creating that seeder we have to do have to create one of the factory so here i want to create another factory for the admin so if you want to create this factory that is also into the packages and that means the testing into the testing if you go to the database into the database right now we are using laravel 8 right so into the laravel 8 you can see there is a factory and that is actually the generating factory so here that is our factory it is all that code so you can see that is all that code so right now i want to do i want to create one of the new factories so if you want to create this factory that will be our command as a php artisan make factory and then whatever the name you want to create you can actually create it so first of all i want to do i want to create another one i copy it and here before by default as a user factory so right now i want to, do, I want to create one of the new factory i simply paste it so now i want to do i want to create another new one okay not that uh, post factory here i want to create another one and just name it as admin admin factory okay so this type of one of the fact name i want to create now click as enter now you can see friend is now created successfully that means the factory created successful into the factories and that is our admin factories so now here i want to do in our this definition okay into the definition method area i want to add uh, some of the data that means here i have already created that all that our name field email field here i, will, I just simply push some of the data if you go to that our user factory by default you can see that is actually the return option better i copy simply let's return total things from our user factory and now in our admin factory here i simply paste it okay i want to push some of the data so that will be name field the email field the um, email verification field as i told you here for the admin i have already copied everything uh, from the user so that is all that our default field right so right now in our field that means in our admin area that is a name so name i want to do and to push it i push one of the name on here i name it that will be as a admin okay that will be as a name will be as a admin and also email address so for the email address i simply remove it here i want to do and to remove um, i want to use one of the email addresses admin at the rate gmail.com so for the user i am actually using that user at the gmail.com and for the admin I want to use as a admin at the rate gmail.com so that's all the data will be actually saved in particular this table okay that means in our admin table this field area it will be saved so that will be as the email verification here we don't need to do anything and that's the password and this password by default one of the password you can see by default one of the password as one of the bit trip password and this password name as a password okay so right now it's okay with me if you want to change it you can change it to remember token as a string so if you want to access um, the string so here also you have to do you have to use it you can see here we don't need um we have to use it so if you go to that our user factory into the user factory that is actually our use illuminate support and the str so i copy it and then here i simply paste it okay so here i'm using that str so for the reasons i simply add that as a str okay friends so that's all you have to do and after that in our cedar into the cedar there is a database cedar so into the cedar area now i want to do and to add this admin factory right so that means when uh, i will run that means here if you go there i have already um, added that that means if you go to the database into the database there is a seeding and when you run this seeding command that means this command then this file will be run okay that means this cedar file database cedar will be run so into the database cedar i just simply put some of the notification that means you run our this admin factory okay that means this one i want to run it and here you can see that is by default one of the common line so right now i want to do and to open it i make it as a not the noted so now in our app model i have created as a admin with our admin model so that is our admin with this admin model our factory so that is a clear factory and then create right so right now here we don't need to use this i just simply want to run our this admin factory that means this one so now i want to do i want to seed it okay so here if you want to seed it you can also directly access that cedar rather than i also want to do and to migrate this uh, table that means migrate our admin table again and here i want to install it so if you want to do that work here i want to run one of the php artisan and the migrate and then also want to seed it so that will be as a seed 
okay so now if you click as a enter yes you can see it's now showing as a nothing to migrate because of all before i have already migrated right so that is a showing as a nothing as migrate and database seeding completed successfully that means this all the data so here i have passed that name i passed that email address and also i passed that password so this all the data will be now redacted to our database table okay that means here i have already passed that our admin see to the admin area it will be redacted i show you like if you go to our admin before that was empty now click as i browse yes you can see friend now that is id number name i name it as admin right so here i name that I push that name as a seed that name as a admin and um, email address as a admin at the gmail.com so that is our admin gmail.com password everything we successfully see this data in our admin table so friend i hope it's very much clear to you how can see this data how can pass all the data into the database table so now for our multi-authentication system also we have to do we have to create another guard by default actually they are using that for the user using that web guard so now i want to do and to create another guard so how can create this guard in our next video i will show you that things with a live example in our previous video we have created one of the factory for the admin as admin factory we have created one of the model as a admin model and also we have created another controller for the admin as a admin controller and then we see some of the data in our database table that means in our admin table in our admin that means in our e-commerce into the admins uh, table we have seed some of the data right and here you can see that is actually our data perfect so now we have to do we have to create the guard okay as i told you for creating that multi-authentication system by default they are using that means laravel using the web guard so now for our admin i want to do and to create another guard so for creating this guard uh, right now i want to do and to make it as a clean okay so i remove everything from this position and for uh, creating that guard you have to do you have to go to that uh, config so that is our http controller the middle layer and then there is a config so into the config area if you go to that auth and into this auth here you can see friend by default this guard is using uh, for the user as a web and password as a users so now for our admin we have to do we have to create this guard so you can see that is a web guard so now i want to do i want to create another one i want to create another guard for our admin right so now i name it as admin and for the providers here before that was a user so now i want to do i want to create another one as admins okay so i name it as admins perfect and here i am actually adding that provider as admins right so now we have to do we have to also create these providers so if you want to create these providers you can see there is a user providers so that is actually the provider so now i want to do i want to create another providers for the ad, admin so now i copy it and simply after that i paste it okay friend so now i am here i'm here using that provider names the provider name as the admins so now i copy it so that will be as a admins and also i have created another model for the admin right so into the model folder here i have created one of the model as the admin model so that is in our app and then the models and then the admins now i want to do and to name it as the admin i hope friend it is very much clear to you and after that also we have to do we have to uh, create the password option in the password option and then the user so right now i want to do and to create the same that means the resetting password option into the resetting password option uh, for the user i want to create another new one here i simply paste it so that will be for the admins okay that will be for the admins and also the providers i have already created one of the providers as the admins right so that will be as the admins and rest of these the table the password reset will be the just like that same expert 60 everything will be just like that same and rest of this will be just like that same like there is a password timeout will be same okay here i have created this uh, password reset option for the admins i have created one of the providers for the admins and also here i have created that admin provider details right that means the guards so perfect so now i want to do i have to click on the save all so now we have to do we have to work with our logging which method is actually responsible for the logging as i told you before if you want to check it uh, like that is a project i want to open the cmd 
and here if you run with the php artisan and the route list so i open that route list so into the route list area as i told you before friend uh, there have the one of the e logging method so first of all i want to do and to find out that login mm, there is a logout the register there is a locking and with the locking area you can see that is the create method so this create method is responsible for creating this user and here that is actually the one of the file as a laravel fortify http controllers and authenticated session controller okay so that is actually the um, controller is responsible uh, for creating this uh, locking so now i want to do and to find out uh, this file okay that means this authenticated session file so if you want to find it uh, if you are using that windows then you have to do you have to write press as a control p okay with the control p i want to do and to find out that authenticate authenticate uh, session so authenticate session controller okay so there are the two controller one is the authenticated session controller dot php which is into the vendor laravel 45 src http controller and in particular this folder area they have one of the file as a authenticated session controller and another one as a two factory authenticator session controller so now i want to do and to open this file so here that is actually the file and you can see that is actually protected by the guard so that is our um, constructor that is a guard constructor and that is the our create method so this is the create method actually responsible for our this user logging okay so right now i am already logging so this user logging option uh, actually comes from our this place okay so that is the responsible for this logging and then there is a storage method that is a locking pipe that is a pipeline and into the locking pipeline they have some of the file that is an attempt to authenticate so that is one of the class that is a redirect to factory authenticate authenticatable okay so that is actually another one that is another class and there is a paper authenticate section okay friends so here that is all that pipe that is a locking pipeline one of the method so and then that is the destroy method okay destroy method is work for the logout option so i will also discuss about that things later you can see everything actually on particular that area and if you want to check it that which uh, guard actually laravel using for the default you can also check it like that is our um, function constructor into the function constructor i want to do i want to show you then the, everything will be more clear to you i want to run with the dd and i want to dd this or this guard okay so I simply add the DD. So now if you click as a save all and now if you um, refresh it, now click as a logout. Now here you can see friend by default which card actually is it using it using that guard as a wave guard. Okay, so that is the same things now we have to do we have to create for the admin, right? So this webguard is for our user, right? So they have the also another uh, table and another table for the users. So now we have to do, we have to create another guard for the admin. And with this admin, now we have to do, we have to get this admin. Like that means when you actually redirected to the admin logging, then it should be our guard will be changed. Our guard will be as the admin guard. Rather than it should be as a default one, as a web guard. Okay. So right now I want to do, I want to remove it. Yeah, we don't need this and now if you click as a save all and after that if you click as a refresh now it's can see it's from perfect so that is our locking so now there is also another things like that is one of the um, stateful guards and so this is stateful guards is that is one of the interface okay so here if you put your cursor you can see that is actually the stateful guards so here if you open it and here you can see friend that is as i told you that is one of the interface and this interface as a stateful guard interface extends the guard so if you put your cursor here you can see that is actually the main guard actually working so if you open it so into this that is one of the another interface as a guard interface and here you can see there is a public as a check the another function as a guest another function for the user function for the id the validate and the set user okay so that is actually the appropriate position if you put your cursor here you can see there is a vendor laravel frameworks src illuminate contacts auth and into the auth folder they have the guard.php so this guard.php is responsible for manage our all that guards 
So friend, I hope you get some of the little idea of how that file is structured in Laravel. So that is one of the interface as a stateful, um, stateful guard interface and that is state and our main guard, right? And also you have to understand one things like when you install Laravel default authentication system in our app into the actions area, we get that some of the 40 files, some of the file, right? So that into the 45 folder, there is a create user, the password validation, some of the file, and also into the JD stream folder, there is a delete user. And if you go to that providers, into the providers area, it's also created another file. Mm, right now, if you go to that providers, into the providers area, that is the 45 service providers. Okay, and into the 45 service providers, here you can see friend, that is one of the register method. So we have to do, we have to work in particular this register method area and also this method actually comes from another places like I show you if you put as a control P again, I want to find out one of the file as a 45. Okay, into the 45 here you can see friend that is actually the 245 file that is a 45 service providers that is in our app providers and 45 service provider that means that is actually the file and another one is the vendor laravel and um, 45 src and into the src area that is a 45 service provider so if you open this file and into this file area here you can see that is actually the main function that means the function for the one of the register method into the register method area it's actually bind it's working with the bind method and it is bind the interface as a stateful guard interface and then there is a 45 guard they are actually using so here there is a register responsible bindings all that are bindings code so that is all that default structure okay friend so that is all that is default structures now we have to do we have to work uh, in particular this area so right now we don't need this so i just share all that file structure we have to do we have to work in particular this register method area so here first of all i want to do i want to add this and i want to add this app so that means that this and then app and i put one of the condition here as a when okay that means a when when here i want to do, do i want to load all that our controller and then attempt to authenticate all that class so first of all i want to do i want to add our controller so i have already created one of the controller if you go to that http into the controller area that is our admin controller right so that is the admin controller first of all we have to do we have to add it so now i copy it and now in our um, that is actually our providers and then 45 service providers here i want to do i want to add it that is a admin controller and in the admin controller class okay i add simply add that admin controller class and also we have to do we have to add our another one if you go to that authenticated session com controller into the authenticated session controller um there are the two things will be needed one is the attempt to authenticate will be needed and uh, also we need that this one as a redact um, two factory authenticatable okay so that is the two of this class will be needed so right now first of all i want to do i want to copy it i copy total things from here and now go to our providers in particular that area first of all i want to add that authenticate that is the attempt to authenticate class and also after that i just put that comma and i want to do i want to take also this one i copy it i copy this two factor authenticate so now after that i simply add it okay that is a redact two factor authenticated authenticatable class and after that here i want to do i want to uh, load um, another one i want to load that needs so i simply load that needs I just added that needs and into the needs area I want to use that as a stateful guards so that means this interface I will copy it so here I simply add this class so I simply add it okay and also we have to add that give give and give area I want to put on the function so that is our function in function area I want to do I want to better put that things on here so that is our function into the function area i want to simply use our um, guards that i have created for the admin so i simply returned it in particular that area so that will be the return return and then with the auth that means authenticated user and then i want to do and to use that guard i want to use that guard which guard i want to use i want to use that admin guard right so that will be as our admin guard 
perfect so now we have to do we have to support our all that classes like that is our attempt to um, authenticate class we have to add the redact to factory we have to add and the stateful guards also we have to add it right so if you want to add it that means if you want to use it so that is in our um, authenticated session controller into the authenticated uh, session controller um, here you can see that is actually stateful guards so now first of all i have to take it I want to use it also. Mm, I want to use it right now. There is a guards here. We don't need this. I close it and into the mm, providers, into the Fortify service providers. Here I have created that registration. So now, first of all, I want to support it as a stateful guards. I want to support that two factor. That means attempt to um, authenticate. Here I also want to use it and also that is another one as a redirect two factor authenticate. Okay. So now I copy it and then after that i simply paste it so that is our redirect that is our attempt to authenticate and also that is a stateful perfect and also the admin controller we have to do have to also support that means we have to use that admin controller so now i want to use that that is in our app and do the app area and then the http into the http and then the controllers Okay, controllers uh, make that your sure spelling is correct that is actually the controllers okay so into the controllers area that is actually i have created as an admin controller so now everything i use it so that is the four things so that is actually one two three four perfect so now friend here i have created on the return or guard for the admin right so now i didn't create any uh, guard so in our stateful guards so that is actually our stateful guards right so now I want to do, I want to um, create another stateful interface guard for the admin. So for doing this in our app, okay, so to the app folder here, I want to do, I want to create one of the new folder and I just name it as a guards. So I name it as a guard. So this type of one of the folder I want to create and into this guard folder, I want to create one of the new file. I just simply, that is actually the stateful guards, right? So now I want to create another one for the admin stateful guard. So this type of one of the file I want to create. Now I just click as a new file. Now click as a save as, and now here I name it as admin and then stateful guards guards.php okay so make that your spelling is correct that is our admin and stateful guard.php so now i simply save it so from our main stateful guard here i copy everything i copy everything from this position and now in our guards folder there is a admin stateful guards here i simply paste it so friend that is actually the procedure okay so that is step by step procedure you have to flow so right now I just click the save all so here i have now created another interface uh, that is a stateful guard so now we have to we have to change that name you have to name it as the admin right so that will be as the admin stateful guards perfect so what i want to do i want to continue this process in our next video we will actually cover all that our rest of this step in our previous video here i have created one of the guard folder into the guard folder i have created another admin stateful guards right so that is our administrative guard that is one of the interface as i told you before so i just copy everything from our main one that means main stateful guard so before that was actually the different place like if you go to that of 45 service providers and the um, stateful guards you can see there is a vendor laravel framework illuminate contracts auth and then the stateful guards right so from here i copy everything and i just simply paste it uh, for our admin but here that is actually our namespace it will be the different before that was as a eliminate contract and the auth so right now our um, namespace will be as an app and then the guards right so now i want to do i want to change that namespace uh, so that will be as a app and then uh, the guard okay that is a guards folder so perfect make that sure you update that uh, namespace so this interface uh, that is admin um stateful guards interface is extended our main guards right so into the main guards that is actually the file so that is like the file location is the main file as i told you before that is our contract auth and the guard so this file is main file so when that means main our interface for the guard so right now it's okay so right now i close it and also here from this position i close it okay that is the auth auth will be needed um, that is our authenticate session guard so that is our providers okay so right now i also remove that stateful guards 
so now we have to do we have to update our controller like here that is for the default one for the web right so for the web that is actually our authenticated session controller as i told you that is a file location into the vendor laravel 45 src http controller and then authenticated session controller so now i want to do i want to copy everything okay i simply copy everything and now i have already created one of the controller for the admin in our http the controller there is an admin controller so here only we have to do we have to change that name space and then the class name so better after that i want to do and to paste it okay i copy everything from our authenticated session controller and now in our admin controller i paste it okay so i just simply paste it only we have to do we have to update that name space so our name space will be this one and that is our app http controller and also we have to update our class name our class name not that authenticated session controller here it will be as an admin controller okay so right now here we don't need this i simply remove it so here make that sure you updated your name space and rest of this will be just like that same and class is now admin controller so now friend here we have to do we have to create some of the method okay so before creating this method i want to do i want to update our um, web route so that means here i want to create another route for this uh, that is a auth as a guard so right now we don't need this okay i close it there is a 45 service providers and that will be also needed so now in our web route area i want to do after this okay after this i want to create one of the another new route so that will be as a route everything will be very clear to you why i'm actually using it because i have to create some of the method and i make it better as a group okay i make it as a group and into the group area i want to do i want to make some of the prefix first okay make it as a prefix and prefix will be i have to also create one of the uh, middleware okay so i will also create another middleware so better i right now i name it literally we will create it that means the admin and into the admin area i want to do i want to create another middleware okay middleware and into the middleware area i want to do i want to create another middleware i just uh, want to create one of the middleware name as the admin okay admin and then admin so this type of, of the middleware i want to create mm, i will do that things later and our prefix will be as the admin prefix that means admin related everything will be as a slash admin and that is our middleware and we have to create one of the middleware in our admin that will be as the admin and then after this okay after this i want to do i want to add that our function so that is our, our function and here i want to do and to add that function okay so right now here i want to do and to create uh, some of the method that means first of all i want to create on the route so in laravel 8 i think you already know what exactly that format you have to flow so that will be one of the gate method and here i put one of the url or url will be as a locking okay so into the locking url area we have to do we have to pass it we have to pass our a controller name so i have created that controller or controller name as admin controller so into the admin controller area i want to create one of the method right so for the reasons here we have to do we have to add it so that is our admin controller class okay that is admin controller class and here i want to do i want to create one of the method and whatever the name actually you choose right now i want to do i want to name it as a logging form okay logging form this type of one of the method i want to create perfect and then the semicolon um, so into the if you want to use that admin controller in laravel 8 i think you already remember that part we have to do we have to use it right so we have to use it so better i use so that is in our app um, that is if you go to our app controller uh, that is admin controller so that is our app http controllers right so now i copy it and here i simply paste it that is the app http http controllers and into the controllers folder i have created as the admin controller so make that sure you use it so now we can actually use that our admin controller into the admin controller area i want to create one of the method as a locking form and also i want to do and to put that uh, locking details so for the reasons i want to create another route so that will be one of the post method okay so that will be another post method and our url will be url will be same i make it as a logging that means a slash logging and after that okay after that i want to add that same logic that means here better i copy it okay 
like to copy total things and after that in our admin controller so into the admin controller in class i want to create another method and i just name want to create another method as a store okay store and better i want to put on the route name i put that name our name will be oh i name it this as a admin logging okay so this type of one of the route name i just simply define I hope friend, it is very much clear to you. So I have created the group prefix as the admin prefix and then the middleware. I didn't create this middleware. I will create this later and then the function and then the one of the I created two of this mm, route. One is the get method. One is the post method. Our URL is actually actually the same as a slash locking. Okay. So here you can see that is actually the slash logging. So I also want to do, I want to use uh, the same things. So what the reason say I name it as a slash locking, you know, that means automatically it will be added that admin and then the slash logging. Okay. So here I have used that prefix as the admin. That means it will be as the admin slash and then the logging, right? So for the reason here, I'm actually using that uh, prefix as the admin logging and, you know, admin controller. I want to create another method as a logging form and to create another one as a store. And I just name it. I name this route as a admin logging. And also I want to update another one. So better I copy this route here before that is actually our user. Okay. So for the user, as I told you, it's actually using the by default as a web. That means a web guard. So now I want to do and to make it as a web guard and that will be uh, for our admin guard. So I make it as a admin. Okay. When it's still as a verified, that means which page you want to actually access, you can actually access it. So now I want to do uh, when this uh, admin will be locking. That means that is actually our admin guard. So when this admin guard will be locking, that will be one of the, I just put that URL will be as a admin slash okay admin slash dashboard and function and into the function area you can actually load different type of template which i will cover it later and just name that as the same name as a dashboard that means return view in our view page so into the view so here there is a view page into the view page that is actually the dashboard okay so this page will be loaded so as I told you, friend, literally, we will actually uh, add a two different template. One will be for our admin, another will be for our um, user, okay? And when it will be logging with the web, web means when it will be as a user, then it will be as a verified. When this will be as a verified, it will be get that as a slash dashboard. That will be as a user dashboard, okay? And then function will be returned the same page. So right now, I am actually using the same page for the admin. And also I am to same, use that same page for the user. Literally we will segment both of these. So now that is actually a web and web for our user as I told you. If you go to that our config into the config. If you go to that auth you can see by default guard as a web guard. And also I have checked it. So that is our web guard. And when it will be as an admin that will be as a URL will be updated as an admin dashboard. Perfect. So now we have to do, we have to create uh, this logging. That means this logging from in our admin controller. So we have to create this method. Now go to our admin controller. So right now we don't need this in our admin controller here after this. Okay. After this, I want to create one of the new method and I just name it as a public and then function and then our method name. I want to create this method as a logging form. I copy it and then that will be as a logging form. Okay. So into the logging form area, I only want to do and to load our guard as the admin guard. So I simply return and return on the view page because here I want to do, I want to use that same um, page. That means same logging page. So this page actually comes from our which place? This page is comes from our, if you go to our view, into the view, there is a auth. You can see into the auth area, that is the logging. So this page actually <laughs> what the, comes from this location. So that is a logging blade.php. So now I want to do, I want to load it. Mm, that means here there is a view. So into the view area, first of all, I want to use that our folder name as auth folder and the logging, right? So that is our view and the auth and then that is actually our logging blade. So I simply uh, load this page and here I want to do, I want to use the one of the guard. Here I want to do, I want to use another guard. So our guard will be changed. Our guard will be right now I want to do, I want to use that as a um, guard. And our guard will be as a admin guard, right? So that will be simply as admin. I hope friend, it's very much clear to you. 
So friend here, I'm loading the same page that is our auth logging. That means when any, uh, when any installer will default authentication system for the user, actually I'm actually able to access this page, right? So that is, if you refresh it, you can see for the user, I'm actually use that same, this page. So this page, as I told you, this page is comes from our wish place. This page is comes from our auth and then the logging, right? And also here I have created another method as a logging form. And into the logging form area, I also load the same page. That means the auth logging page, but only our guard will be changed as the admin. For the reasons here in our auth into the logging, here I'm only want to do and to update um that is actually our action route okay so into the action route i want to change it because of all here i want to do when that will be as a logging there that means this logging page will be loaded when it will be as a guard as a admin guard and that means the slash admin logging then our same page will be loaded okay so for the reasons here i want to do i want to update it, that action and here you can see that is email field that is a password field the remember password field so here only I want to update this action into the action area. Okay, here into the action area, hmm, I want to do, I want to first of all add that how the is set. Okay, that means the is set. I want to first of all add that is set our guard. So I simply add that uh, guard. Okay, I simply add that guard and into the guard area, I want to put that condition as a URL. Our URL when it should be as a, our this guard. Okay, with this guard, when this guard will be a slash, I want to add that slash logging. Okay, logging. So that will be as a slash logging and then um, else, else it should be as a, our default one, as a, that means our out. Okay. I hope friend it's very much clear to you what exactly the things I did on here. So that I just simply load the things that we is said guard, when it should, it should be getting this guard. Here you can see that is actually our guard. When it will be getting this guard, so it will be as a guard name and then slash logging, right? That means it will be as a admin. When it will be get that as a admin guard name, as a, it will be as a admin and then slash login. Okay, so that that will be as the same as else. That is our else and else the route will be the same. The route will be as a logging and with this logging, that means it will be as a only slash logging. I hope friend it is very much clear to you here I simply updated that ac action so right now that's all we have to do so now I just simply um, save it now we don't need these the fortify here also we and that is a providers that will be needed later right now I minimize everything okay I minimize everything so in our admin controller into the admin controller now we have to do we have to support some of the file we have to support that um attempt to authenticate file we have to support the tdac to factory cable this file and also the interface that we are using so here we have uh, used another interface and you can see we have used that interface as a stateful guard interface so now we have to do we have to add all that file so into this um, um here I want to do I want to minimize it so in our action into the action there is a 45 okay here I want to do I want to actually load all that our file that that will be for our only admin related everything so if you want to do that work first of all we have to do we have to create some of the file I want to create this file that is actually the file location we have to find out so, and then we, we have to do we have to add it into the 45 area so for finding out that file location you have to do you have to go to that uh, laravel so right now i minimize everything okay i minimize this one and now if you go to that vendor into the vendor area if you go to that laravel you can see that is a laravel into the laravel there is a fortify into the fortify area you have to go to that src into the src that is the action so into the action area you can see that is the attempt to authenticate okay that is the attempt to authenticate and then there is another file will be needed as a redact um, you can see redact two factor authenticate that means this file so if you want to find out this file if you select it and if you open that open container folder so i simply open it that is open container folder so now it's open so that is actually the two file will be needed that is our redact two factory authenticatable I copy it and also I want to do and to take it another one uh, that is our attempt to authenticate. So now I copy both of this file. Okay, I copy both of this file. So that is our SRC and action. I copy it and now go to our project. 
so into the project now if you go to that app into the actions that is our 45 here i want to do and to paste it okay i want to paste both of this on here okay so here i simply updated both of these so now i want to do and to work with our these two of this file okay so now if you go to the action that is the app action the 45 into the 45 area that is our attempt to you can see that is the attempt to authenticate and also there is another one as a um, redirect to factor so here first of all if you open it we have to do we have to change that name space so now that is not that position so now that is in our app right into the app and then the action folder actions actions folder and with the actions folder that is a 45 right so that is actually our name space so make that sure you uh, update that the name space that is our app and then the actions folder and then the 45 folder and also and to do and to update that name space for our redirect um two factory so here also I want to do and to update both of these okay friend i hope it's very much clear to you so make that sure you updated that name space and rest of this will be just like that same for our redirect to factor authenticable you can see everything will be just like that same here we don't need to change anything okay so that will be just like that same in our attempt to authenticate into the attempt to authenticate only you have to change that name space and rest of this will be same that is a handle uh so that is our another one request remember mm, everything will be just like that so that is the 45 guards so here we also we don't need to change anything okay so now i just click as a save all so right now i close both of this so now we have to do we have to create the media layer okay so that means here i didn't create this media layer so now we have to create this media layer we have to update the provider so step by step i will continue this process in our next video i will show you that things with the live example in our previous video here from our um, that is our library that is laravel 45 and action and from here i take two of this file i take as a attempt to authenticate file and the redirect to factory authenticate so here i take both of these in our 45 area right so i simply add both of this in particular dash position and only i updated that name space right so here i already did that work so now we have to do we have to um create that media layer in our web route area i have already created that name media layer as an admin but i didn't create it right so now we have to actually create it and also i want to share one thing with you mm, like there is our guards that is our http into the http if you go to that media layer into the media layer area you can see that is one of the media layer as a redirect uh, if authenticate so into this authenticated area you can see that is actually the handle one of the method so it into this handle method there is a guard as guard and authenticated guard will be checked and then it will be returned redirect to the route service providers and to the route service providers it will be redirect redirect to the home okay so if you go to that providers like i show you if you go to that providers and to the providers area if you go to that route service providers into the route service providers you can see friend that is actually a public constant as a home and home means that will be as a slash dashboard so i'm actually sharing all that file structure of this laravel how that things exactly working that is how that locking functionality actually working okay so you can see the redirect to the home so this home means in our providers area that is a route service providers that is actually the home and this home will be as a slash dashboard so friend that is for the default one right so if you go to our web route into the web route here you can see that is actually our default um, that is a media layer and that is our guard as a web guard they are using the default guard as a web guard and when it should be as a web guard uh, then automatically first of all it should be redirect and redirect to the home and into the route service providers it should be get that home and then that slash dashboard okay so that is actually the default one when it will be as a locking when you put your appropriate user email address password if you click as a logging it will be as a slash dashboard so now i want to do the same things i want to create another one for that admin okay so when it will be as a admin then it will be return redirect to the another um, dashboard area with that our guard that i have already created as admin guard for the reasons here i want to do i want to create another function i want to create another function as a public and i make it as a static okay i make it as a static function i make it as a static function and into the static function area i want to use this uh, redirect so that means this redirect too so i want to add that redirect 
redirect to and use the redirect to area i want to do and to pass that as a guard okay i will form with the redirect to area i want to do and to pass that our this guard so now i simply pass this guard and into the guard area so when it will be as a get any guard so i want to return okay return and then this guard return guard and return guard will be as a slash dashboard okay so i want to do and to pass it as a slash dashboard that means what that means this guard when it should be as a admin okay then then that will be as a admin admin slash dashboard okay so that will be actually admin dashboard and rather than when it should be as a um, normal user then it, that will be as a slash dashboard right so which already there have that dashboard so now i want to do and to redirect to the guard i just simply added that guard when it should be getting as a any guard so i have already created one of the guard as a admin that will be as a admin slash dashboard i hope friend it's very much clear to you so now they have the two condition one is the default user another is for the admin okay so as i told you uh, if you go to our web route into the web route you can see i have actually used two guard one is the admin guard one other is the web guard web guard is for the user admin guard is for our admin locking right so for the reasons here i now i pass that as a guard and then our dashboard so here i pass that guard so now i want to do in our um, redirect that means in our middleware in our redirect if authenticated before that is only single one so now i want to do and to pass not this one here i want to pass our this condition okay that means this guard so now i copy it and here i simply after this i paste it I hope friend it is very much clear to you so now that is totally dynamic okay so when it should be as a web then it should be as a user slash dashboard and when it should be as a admin that will be as a admin slash dashboard so now i want to do i want to create another middleware i want to create another middleware for the admin redirect if authenticable that will be just like that same better you know the middleware area you can also create it by the command line so right now i want to make it directly okay i want to make create directly as a this type of another middleware i click as a save as that will be as a admin okay admin redirect if authenticated dot php so this type of another middleware i want to create and in our middleware that is a redirect if authenticated so right now i copy everything from here okay that will be just like that same i copy everything and now in our admin redirect authenticated here i simply paste it now i just simply save it perfect right. so right now our class name we have to update so now our class name will be as a admin right so admin redirect if so i name it as a admin so when you create any uh, middleware when you create any middleware what exactly you have to do you have to register it into the kernel right so now into the kernel go to the kernel see into the kernel area i want to do and to register it so here i have already na named that our middleware our middleware will be as a admin right so now in our kernel with the kernel php better i copy that guest okay i copy that guest that was our default one so now i name it as a admin and into the admin in our app http middleware area i have created one of the new one i have created that new one as a admin redirect authenticate so now i want to do and to change it that will be as a add me redirect hmm, if authenticated class so now here i also registered that our new middleware as i have created as a admin redirect if authenticated and i just name it as a admin okay so now that's all now click the save all so perfect so right now we don't need this also we don't need this i better I close everything okay i close everything that is our admin that is our admin controller so to the admin controller i have already created one of the method as a locking form right so that is actually i have created the locking form method and also there are the another method as store method so into the store method if you go into the store method there is a locking response um, there is a logging response into the locking response here you can see there is a vendor the laravel 45 src http response at the locking response if you open it so here we have to update okay so here we have to update so that is our locking response that is our restore method so i have already created this as a in our admin controller that is our restore method make the sure that is actually the same okay so now into the logging that is a locking response here into this particular this file okay here we have to work 
so friend that is the default one okay so that is actually our default one when this user will be logging then that is a redirect to intent the config and the fortify home okay so that is our default one so now i want to create new one i want to create new one for the admin if you want to create it uh, better here i want to do because of all when it's always a web into the web area it will be redirect to the um, admin dashboard right so now i want to do i want to go to our um, that is actually our action that is http so into the http folder here i want to create one of the new folder and i want to create one of the folder as a responses okay responses this type of one of the folder i want to create and here i want to create one of the new file and i want to do and name it the same name okay that is locking response i want to create another new file and here i click as a save as i name it as a locking response dot php so this step of one of the file i will just simply create and now that is for our default one i want to do and to copy everything and now i want to add this for our admin i copy everything and now in our response the logging response here i paste it only first of all we have to do we have to update our name space so this will be not this one this will be in our app right that is our app and then the slash the http and then the responses our folder name okay so that will be our folder name make the sure spelling is correct so that is the responses perfect and here that will be redirect redirect now i want to do i want to it will be redirect to our which position it will be redirect to our admin slash dashboard right so it will be redirect to particular this area so now i copy it and now in our admin that means in our responses that is a logging responses into the logging responses area i only want to do and to update it this one so by default for the user it will be as a fortify home and when it will be as a admin that will be redirect to the admin slash dashboard okay so friend that's all we have to do okay so that is the main actually step by step process that you have to flow so now let's check this out if everything okay it should be work rather than uh, if you get any error we'll solve it don't worry about it now i just click as a refresh so right now that is our username as a user at the gmail.com and the password so now if you click as a login so now it's showing all of the error as a class app auth is not found okay that means in our 45 service provider here i have used that as a auth you can see i have used that auth but i didn't load it i understand that error so as i told you if you get any error don't worry about it we will solve it so now let's uh, go to our providers that means that is our http mm, that is actually a provider so it is the provider that is a 45 service provider here i have created as a registration right i have created all of the method as a register method into the register method you can see return auth i'm using that auth but here i didn't load it so make that sure you use it so use as a auth okay so i simply use that auth okay so our problem is now solved now click as a save all and now if you go there click as a go back and refresh it again and now i put that as a again the user that is our locking into the locking area that is our user at the right gmail.com and the password now click as a login so now it's showing as a credential did not match for the user okay so into the user area i have used that user at the right gmail.com and password was you do me one two three four five right now click as a login mm, it's not locking if you want to check it with the admin and go to that admin and for the admin i have already seen that data as admin at the gmail.com and password actually the password right so now i want to check also check it as a admin at the gmail.com and password i make it as a password okay i make it as a password now click as a login it's not getting it mm, better i want to do I want to change that password okay i want to you do and to go to that user into the user area i have used that password as a udemy 12345 that is one of the bit trip password i copy it and now go to our admin into the admin area you also want to do and to update that password i paste it okay i paste it now that should be as a um, admin that means you didn't want to three four five now let's check this out if you don't get a refresh i make it as a again refresh and then i make it as an admin 
and then you do me one two three four five now click as a login so here you can see friend, it's logging but uh, if you want to check it like i just check as an admin slash dashboard Okay, it's just check as admin slash that but yes you can see it's logged in as a high admin so it's logging with the admin you can see that is actually our admin username so if you go to our admin table into the admin table that is a name field as an admin but here it not should be like that way i click as a logout so when it should when you put your e user email address and the password and after that logging it will be as a slash dashboard when it should be as a admin logging then it will be as a admin dashboard right so maybe they have some of the issues we have to update maybe they have some of the issues don't worry my i will continue this process in our next video i will solve these issues in our previous video here we successfully load our um, locking option and here right now user is not working but if you use that as an admin admin is working right so if you refresh it if you open that user and put that appropriate password you can see there is a credential that not match that means it's not perfectly getting that as a user and the password so maybe they have some of the issues and also i want to do want to check another one because i have also created another route if you now go to our web route and i want to do and to access that as a um, um, another one as a admin logging so i want to do and to use that as a um, admin and if you click as the admin logging so now it's showing another error as a target class admin dot <laughs> i understand that will be one of the column no no not that uh, full rest of piece so here i think i understand that part so you can see that is here i am using that comma so that will be as a clone so clone slash admin i have already created that middleware so now click as a save all and now if you go there click as a refresh it again yes you can see friend now when you actually access that admin locking then it will be redirected to the same locking page and also when you access that direct locking page yeah it's also locking that means our locking page is now loaded so here i have already loaded both of these right so one is for our admin that is our admin guard another is our web guard so perfect working but here our user is not working and if you go to the admin slash logging and here if you put your admin that means if you put that admin at the right gmail.com that is our admin email address and the password i'm using as a udemy12345 right i have updated that um, our bitrip password now click the logging you can see it's now logging successfully so if you want to access that our admin slash dashboard yeah you can see you are lo perfectly logging but it's not redirected to you uh, to the our dashboard page so when you successfully logging it should be redirected to our particular this area so why this is happening so now let's find out that issues as i told you don't worry when you face any issues we'll solve it so this um, page is responsible for our this response into the response redirect here i am using that ad pin and dashboard that means when it should be successfully logged in that should be redirect to the admin dashboard right so here this page i want to load it so not the default one if you go to our admin controller into the admin controller that is our storage and here there is a locking response you can see that is actually the locking response as a locking responses dot php so that is our default one right so that is our default one so into the admin into the admin area i am using this one that is a locking response you can see that is a locking response i am actually using default one for the reasons actually it's redirected to not that our uh, slash dashboard area that means our admin slash dashboard it's not redirecting because of all here i'm using that laravel 45 constat right but here i have already created another new one as a response and the logging response you can see so now i want to do i want to load this one not that one so i copy it so here here i want to do and to use this one so i simply paste it so that will be the app http response and then that is our logging response i hope friend it's very much clear to you so that is our admin controller so into the admin controller that is our response as a logging response as i told you 
here i am actually using this right now it should be uh, work that means right now it should be in our store method here i'm using that as a response logging that means that is actually our response logging okay not this one that is our default one and that is our new one so for the admin i have also created a new one and here now it should be redirected to our admin dashboard now let's check this out if you now click as a save all and now go there and now from here i click as a log out and now sign in again and i want to log in with the admin first admin login and here i put that as a admin at the rate gmail.com password as you do me one two three four five now click as a login so after that logging it's redirected to direct to the home page so why check it as an as an admin logging yes you can see you successfully logged in but it's not redirected to the admin dashboard so as i told you this is uh, for that is responsible for our this logging that means the logging response that i have created into the responses that is a logging and here there is a redirect intent of that config okay so right now we don't need to use that config so here i want to do i want to actually remove this um, that is actually remove this config function i just simply remove this config function i simply remove it okay so now let's check this out if you now click as because that is actually our customized new one now click the save all and i want to do and to refresh it so now i want to do and to check it again click as a logout and now i want to sign in again with the admin admin logging and now i put that admin email address and the password i have updated as a udemy one two three four five now click as a login yes you can see friend now that is perfect so that is the things we are looking for when you appropriate uh, put that appropriate username and the password then automatically it should be redacted to our admin dashboard okay so now i think every step is very much clear to you that the return that is a redirect intent our admin dashboard okay that is our it, it should be redirect to particular that area that means it should be redirect to the web into the web area that is an admin dashboard into the admin dashboard function return redirect to our one of the view page and and that is the our dashboard page okay so that means our view dashboard page is now loaded so same everything will be same just i updated that our url so that will be uh, for our admin so here i will actually uh, load another different type of template when we started our project so right now our functionality actually works okay so now click as a logout i want to check it again and here i name it as admin okay admin and then slash logging yes now it's perfectly redirected to the same page and now if you put your if you here if you want to also check it with the user user is actually working or not three four five okay so now it not should be locking with this user yes you can see it's not perfectly getting that credential so right now here you have to do you have to add that as an admin that means the admin email address that is our url is now totally different as admin logging and there is a password as you do me one two three four five now click as a login yes you can see it's now successfully sign in as admin slash dashboard right so our admin portion is now perfectly working so now we have to do we have to check our default one our default one will be here if you put your admin email address and the password now it not should be locking yeah you can see it's now locking with the admin uh, if you go to that admin login yeah it's locking with this admin but that means our admin related every functionality is now perfect right so now we have to do we have to work for our default one uh, for the default one here if you put that as a user that means i have already created one of the email address for the user as a user at gmail.com and password you do me two three four five now click as a login so now it not actually logged in okay so that is the default one that have some of the issues maybe so we have to find out these issues and we have to solve it so don't worry i will continue this process in our next video i will solve these issues also in our previous video here we successfully complete our admin option right so here right now if you open that admin locking and here if you put your app admin email address password click as a locking it's now successfully working but they have some of the issues for our default one 
uh, into the default one if you put that admin sorry that will be the user right user at the rate gmail.com because here that is our admin at the rate gmail.com and password there is another one another one is the user so that is the user at the rate gmail.com and password now click as a logging so now it's not uh, logging perfectly it's now showing as a credential do not match of the record so here they have some of the issues um, I now I to and to actually close everything here we don't need this and there is a providers into the providers area there is our 45 service providers okay into the 45 service providers i have created one of the registers so into the register method i am using the admin controller i am using the attempt to authenticate controller and also redirect to factory authenticable okay and if you go there you can see friend here i am actually using the default one that is a laravel 45 actions and that is also the default one but I have already take both of these in our default into the 45 into the 45 area you can see I have already take this into the attempt to um, authenticate and that is our another one as a redirect two factor. So that is our default one I want to do and to change it and here I want to use this one whatever actually I take it uh, from here you can see that is actually will be as a our name space so now I want to do and to change that name space. So that will be not here that will be from to this our app actions at the 45 that means this one i want to use for our attempt to authenticate and also for the redirect if two factor authenticable here i also want to do and to use the same okay i want to use this file okay not the default one so i simply updated both of these and also if you go to our admin controller into the admin controller here you can see i have also used that as a um, redirect to factory and attempt to authenticate and that is also the default one so right now i want to, to use our this profile so if you want to use it so that will be as a use app into you know, app actions the 45 and then that is a clear file and also i want to update this one so that will be the same as a app actions 45 okay so that's the reason actually it's not working for the default one it's conflicted with our admin okay so now let's check this out that's all you have to do now click as a save all and now if you go there click as a refresh so now i'm um, already into the slash logging right into the slash logging area I want to use that user at the red gmail.com and now you do me one two three four five now click as a sign in yes you can see friend now <laughs> everything is great so now it's successfully returned redirect to our default dashboard and you can see it's now showing as a high user that means right now you are logging with the user right and also if you now click as a logout so now it's successfully log out if you click as a logging and here if you now use that as an admin now it not should be logging as admin and the password you do me on to three four five now click as a login yes you can see it's now perfectly getting that credential that this credential does not does not match okay perfect and now here if you want to access with the same if you want to access with the user then everything will be okay user and the diff password we do me on to three four five perfectly logging as a high user so right now i want to check it with the admin and that means that will be as a admin slash logging so now the same logging page uh, here i want to use that user okay that means user email address password it not should be login yes it's perfectly getting this credential and here i want to use that our admin admin at the right gmail.com and the password is udemy12345 and now if you click as a login yes you can see it's now perfectly redirected to our dashboard and it's showing as a high admin that means our multi-authentication part is now successfully working i hope friend you enjoyed very much okay so you know next video i also want to share one thing with you like when you logging with the user okay when you logging with the user then if you logging so after that logging it's perfectly redirected to the dashboard but when you click as a logout okay when you click as a logout it's written redirect to you to the home page so here i don't want to actually um back that things as a home page it should be written redirect to the logging page or something like that or rather than if you logging with the admin dashboard 
okay that means the admin logging and here if you put as a admin at the rate gmail.com that means the appropriate email address and the password click as a logging then it's successfully logged in but here when you click as a logout so here you can see it's now also redirected to you to the home page so here i don't want to actually display that things like that way so if you want to change it how can change it in our next video i will show you that things with a live example in our previous video here we successfully complete our multi-authentication system so right now if you click as a login into the logging if you put that use appropriate email user email address password click as a logging then it's redirected to our user dashboard page and from here if you go to that profile so that is the your user profile right so from here that is all the default ones so everything will be work and here from this position if you click as a logout so now it's redirected to our home page so now i want to do and to change it if you want to change it you can change it and also for the admin for the admin if you go to that admin slash logging and here if you put that user email address and password that will be actually display that credential error yeah you can see it's now perfectly getting this error so now here you have to do you have to use that as an admin that means our admin admin at the gmail.com and the password as you want to 345 now click as a logging now it's successfully returned direct to our um, admin dashboard right so that is the admin dashboard and hi admin perfect but right now that is actually our profile will be not work um, for the um, dashboard but when we actually created our project i will also create it um, that means i will customize our total admin dashboard okay then we will actually create that profile we'll add that images so don't worry about it only here i updated our this route which is very much important part so right now we are able to access two of this dashboard okay so, but when you actually locking with the admin and after that locking when you click as a logout it's now redirected to our home page so now i don't want to redirect to the home page so if you want to do that work it's very much easy mm, for the admin for the admin if you i have already created one of the controller for the admin right so that is our admin controller that means in our http into the controller and that is our admin controller so into the admin controller i have already copy everything okay i copy everything and here i paste it you can see i just paste it that is one of the destroy method so that is a destroy method is for our sign out portion right so that is actually the, that means it's actually destroy that is a locking by default uh, one of the methods will be working that is a session will be destroyed so into this destroy method that is a logout responsive okay that means response into the logout response here you can see that is a vendor the, um, the laravel 45 that is the src http response and the logout response so if you click on on particular that area so here you can see that is actually the two read response two response and by default there is a redirect to the slash home home means that is actually when you click as a slash that means it will be redirected redirect to our home page so that is actually our home page right so now i want to do when that will be as a logout that will be um redirect to our admin slash logging so here it will be redirect i want to do and to simply copy it and then here i only want to update it that part so i simply updated that things on here that will be as a admin login now click as a save all and now if you go there now click as a enter now i want to log in with this admin click as a login so yeah perfectly i'm logging now click as a logout yes you can see it's now perfectly returned redirect to our admin login i hope friend it's very much clear to you so that is actually the file location i hope you can well understand about it and also the there are the other issues like if you locking with the same as a locking our with our user so user email address and the password if it does a login now you can see it's not successfully redirect to our dashboard but here right now if you click as a logout then you can see it's now redirect to the same as a admin logging okay so so here if you want to actually segment it then you have to also segment this page that means that is actually one of the our destroy method into the destroy method we get that things from which place so we get that things from to the authenticated user session right that means the authenticated authenticated session authenticated session controller right so that is actually our main one from here I actually like copy everything i copy everything and i just simply paste it in our admin 
so then you have to actually uh, create new one so right now i want to do i don't want to create it um differently so here only i want to change that our logout that means our logout response into the logout response here i want to do and to change it only that not the home page it will be returned direct to our logging page okay that means the slash logging now click the save all and now if you refresh it again and now i want to do i want to log in with the admin now click as a sign in dashboard is perfectly redirect now click as a sign out yes you can see it's now perfectly redirect to our logging page and also for the user if you now use that user email address and the password now click as a login yes it's perfectly logging with the high user and now from here if you click as a logout then it's not redirected to the home page it's redirected to the our logging page so that is actually the responsible for um, redirect this page so that is a clear page okay so into the admin that is destroy method there is a logout response into the logout response that is a vendor laravel 45 src http response and the logout response dot php so this page from here you can actually change it i hope it's very much clear to you so friend here we successfully complete our total uh, multi-authentication system so right now you can log in with the user okay you can log in with the user you can log sign out and also if you want to log in with the admin that will be as the admin slash logging our logging page will be loaded and here if you put your appropriate email address admin email address and the password click as a login then you can see that is a high admin is successfully logging so friend that is very much important one of the part i hope enjoy it very much so literally we will actually create two different template one will be for the admins admin related template i want to load in particular that area and also for the user and for the user i want to do i want to create another dashboard so here that will be obviously as a user at the red gmail.com so when you log in with this user then the here i want to load another dashboard okay so how can do that work is step by step when you started our project i will show you everything with a live example so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video